Mm-hmm. Hello guys, today is uh, Wednesday, December something or other. Today is uh, Fed Decision Day and uh, I'm not trading today because I am finally sick. <laughs> Between that weekend long hockey tournament, uh, day and night, and just everything else, I am now, everybody else in the house is pretty well sick. I am now sick too. So that's fine. I'm going to take today and do a, a short Q&A video. I'm going to try and do a short Q&A you know, every week uh, or much more often so that I can get these out to you guys sooner than later. I'm way behind in my questions and answers right now, so this is my attempt at getting started. First of all, Rusty Bandwagon, you are a wild man yesterday. <laughs> I'm glad that trade worked out okay for you, but man, I thought you were joking when you commented that. Glad it worked out. Iro Melodius, do you recommend a daily point goal? A number of points. I, You know, you guys all that have watched me for any amount of time, you know that I have kind of a 10 point soft goal. But it's not even really a goal, it's just like if I get 10 points, I'm happy enough with myself. And that's like more of an incentive to quit then. As far as it being a hard goal, I, I never really traded with hard goals, uh, except to just be positive. And that's really all that matters. But it depends on the style of trading you do and everything too. Like if you trade the way that, that I do with stop losses of four or five points and uh, targets of 15, 20, 10, whatever, 10 points is quite fine. You can do anything you're ever gonna need or want to do with 10 points a day. So that's probably a pretty good one, but essentially just if you're positive, you've seen me, like if I'm positive, I wind up up five, six, seven points after a first trade, you know, nine times out of 10, I won't take a second one because I know I'm positive and then I can end positive and that's what I really want more than anything. Jack Turner, do you have to replot your levels every time you roll over the contract? Yes, I do that. Now I could just plot them on the continuous, like what I could do is I could just show a continuous contract for everything on trading view, but the thing is the continuous switches on arbitrary days and sometimes I switch before that. It just, so I prefer to just make everything except for my daily so I can see the data way back as the current contract chart and then whenever it rolls over, which it has now rolled and I haven't marked my charts up yet because I haven't traded since it rolled, but I will be doing that and I'll put that in a video for you guys too so you can see it anybody who hasn't seen me do it before. But I do that because I like to have the exact contract I'm actually trading in my Sierra chart charted in, in trading view. And it's not a big deal because I have the lines linked from all the charts so any lines drawn on that specific contract will tie to all the other charts of it on my layout. And it makes me look through the chart again and see if I missed anything and maybe if there's some levels I've had on there before I just take off because the price is too far away and they're not a really big significant level or something. DMRS59, the software that I use for my uh, screen uh, splitting is called UltraView Desktop. UltraView Desktop Manager. There's, um, uh, I'll see if I can remember to put a link in the description for you, but uh, it works really, really well. Um, they now have a 3.0 version out that I just upgraded to because I finally put Windows 11 on my computer. And unfortunately, the 2.0 didn't work right. I went on the website, sure enough, there was a 3.0 out for Windows 11. It works better than the 2.0 ever did. I had to pay 30 bucks to upgrade it, but it was well worth it. And it's, it's $100, um, I think Canadian, maybe US, I forget, in total for the software. And it's well worth it if you have a 4K screen you're using for your monitor. It just makes it function like a whole bunch of independent monitors. And like I say, the 3.0 version that works with Windows 11 is significantly better than the old version was. A lot of the little quirks in it are gone. So I would highly recommend that. Will NS has a question. What actually moves the ES? Um, because, you know, it's all these individual stocks. How can you actually trade the index? The big thing is when you're trading the ES futures contract, you're not trading the index. You're trading a futures contract on the future value of the index. And that instrument that you're trading is traded by people and machines. It's its own instrument. So that was, I think, the principal reason why you can chart it and trade it and it makes sense and respects levels and things like that. Because um, you're, not, you're not trading some calculation, you're actually trading a specific instrument. And uh, there's all kinds of things at play there. There's 
individual traders, there's machines, there's arbitrage, uh, you know, between the cash and the futures. But as far as the big levels holding up, you know, you're always going to have that as long as you have actual people trading it. Because people think in terms of round numbers and uh, people program computers in terms of round numbers. It's just the way that we, that we work. So that's kind of my take on it. Not a 100% educated answer, but just the practical answer of what I see every day. Hold reset. Thanks for your questions, guys. By the way, I always appreciate these. These are really fun to answer. So I want to try and make more time to do this kind of video. What parameters do you look at to make a decision to move to break even? I don't have a hard and fast rule of when to move to break even, but generally looking back on my trades and other people looking back on my trades for me, uh, it looks like it's usually around five points. It's, the answer is, as soon as I'm positive enough that I would really, you know, be angry at myself for losing money on the trade, that's when I'll move to break even. It winds up being usually around five. And when you find the trade isn't working out and price is moving against you, do you immediately focus on getting out or do you allow it room to discover? Well, if it comes to the point where I think I'm wrong, I focus on getting out as close to break even as possible. Yeah, uh, but if it's something where I'm not totally sure and you see lots of that, I'll mention that too in the videos, right? Like, I don't know. But if it's, they say I don't know and I'm still in the trade, it means I'm willing to give it a chance. If I Sometimes when I figure that I am absolutely wrong, then I'll just focus on getting out at the best price possible. Trading online, 98.38. My trading view ES1, the exclamation point, that should be the continuous chart, I imagine, has very different prices than your chart. How could that be? Um, open, high, low, and close is different. Uh, other bars are different. Most likely what you've got is like, if that's the continuous contract, the only, first of all, the only chart that I chart on the continuous contract is the daily. So any of my other charts you see, they're all on the specific contract month. So they won't line up with the daily, some with, you know, the continuous sometimes. Um, but what I suspect is happening is you have your daily chart set to um, extended trading hours like ETH, I think is the setting on the bottom, electronic hour, trading hours or extended trading hours, whatever. Essentially the Globex session is included. So it's the 24 hour um, candle, right? So that's mostly what, that's probably where it is, like where the issue is. Um, now I chart everything like that with the Globex session, the 24, full 24 hours. Anytime the market's open, it prints on the chart with the exception of my daily, that I have set to regular trading hours. I think it's called RTH. And essentially what that is, is like the New York Stock Exchange hours, just the day session only. I do that so I can see the gaps. And that's probably what the difference is there. I'm trying out a new camera again today, guys. So let me know how you think this looks. This is also, a. this was a super cheap uh, Kijiji find. Kijiji's like our Craigslist. Jafar asks, and I've answered this before, but I realize not everybody's been here forever. Um, what time frame do you usually execute your trades and why? 4,000 tick chart. That's what I execute on. I don't have any indicators on that chart at all. That's the one you see above me um, in the videos. And that's just a totally naked chart. That's what I actually place my trades on. I use the tick chart for that, just for entries, because it adjusts depending upon the actual amount of orders, the amount of trades that take place. So when it's really busy, it prints more candles. When it's quiet, it prints less candles. It gives you kind of a sense of volume and price in one bar. And uh, I like to use that for kind of zeroing in on the price to get my entry and my exit. I have to keep editing out all the sniffles and stuff here. And that's, that's winter for you. At least we finally have some snow. It got really cold in October and we got snow and then it all warmed up and dried up and it was almost Christmas with no snow, but now we got some, so it's all right in the world. Mugambo Kushwa. Sorry if I got that wrong. Thanks for your question. Uh, essentially, he said that a trade that I got in here is that I got into a trade and it looked like I wasn't in the red at all, but it turned, but uh, I was a little bit in the red, but I didn't show that one part of it. Uh, got the impression there was no, don't take us the wrong way, it says, I got the impression there was no heat, but wanted to know how long the trade was in the red. I don't really know. Um, I, a lot of the times, you know, whenever I'm making up the videos, if I'm not saying something or if nothing's really happening, I just 
fast forward through that part. Uh, so how long was the trade in the red? I'm going to say probably around five seconds looking at the timestamps there. It must have just poked down and back up. I'm not, I'm not totally sure, McGabbo. Um, but that's okay. I mean, you have to expect to be in the red a little bit. Very, very rare that you can get in with absolutely no heat against you because, you know, you immediately have one tick of heat against you anyway when you enter. So um, that kind of is part of the part of the game. You guys, anybody who doesn't have a newsletter yet that's been put on the list, I've been getting back to everybody who's emailed me saying that they're not on it and giving them the email address to add. The way it works is my newsletter is sent from a different site because we don't we're not a ton of people or anything but we're a little bit more than i can easily use a gmail for so anything from me that's sent to everybody comes from the actual mailing list itself and that's the uh the one with the period in it and stuff anybody who's emailed me that hasn't got it so far i believe i've given them that address to add to their white list or to their address book and it's working i think for everybody now but if you're signed up and you're not getting a newsletter i sent one last week um just email me daytradernextdoor at gmail.com. I'll give you that and we'll make sure that we get you on the newsletter. I don't send a ton of junk out to you. I only send you useful stuff. And when I change my levels or when something big comes up, I send you an email, but that's about it. So you're not going to hear from me every day, like pretty much every other thing you sign up for. So if you don't get one right away, don't worry about it. But if you didn't get one last week, send me an email and I'll make sure that you're on the list. Comment from user rs3kc8v so on. Thank you for your uh, comment. I just had a question, like, do I use any ICT theories, um, like order blocks, fair value gaps, liquidity, all that. ICT, I had to look up uh, this inner circle trader, so I'm not familiar with them, uh, but the order block idea, fair value gap, liquidity, that's something that has been around for a while. Um, I do know one guy, Push, talks about order blocks and stuff all the time, and I believe he trades a lot that way. So I certainly think there's, that it's legitimate, there's value, you know, that they're an actual thing. You can see them happen. Um, but it's not part of my methodology, no. I'm, I'm concerned with liquidity, of course, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't trade that way. I don't um, research those things the same way that those guys probably do. So different thing than what I do. Farm Girl T asks, I don't have the stop loss and take profit buttons like you showed once you placed the short order. This, I think, is on the TradingView demo. Um, is that something you have to enable in settings? Uh, yes. If you go, and I, I, I don't have my computer with me right now, unfortunately, but essentially you have to enable chart trading and one-click trade, okay? Um, if you go through that video again, whenever you see me um, in the settings, uh, when I'm setting up the chart, um, make sure that everything you have checked is what I've got checked. Uh, you do have to enable... Uh, I'm just getting confused what they call it in Sierra versus what they call it in um, in TradingView, but I think it's one-click trading or chart trading, something like that. Uh, and that essentially makes it that you can trade on the chart and by moving the lines on the chart and that. If you have that enabled, you will have those things there when you hover over your position once it's on. So just check that video again, pause on those screens, and make sure you have the same thing selected as me, and it should work just like that. Schulte Tube. Uh, he wants to know the exact model number of my TV that I used. I don't have that right here, and they don't make it anymore. However, I was looking um, at them uh, over Black Friday and all that stuff, just kind of for curiosity. And I'll tell you all you need to know. It has to, if you want a high sense, and high senses work great for me. I've had high sense TVs before. These just for regular TVs, and they've been great also. So that's why I, you know, I, I like them, and they're they're a good price too. Um, it must be quantum dot, and it must be 4K and a 55-inch. The current, any TV, like mine are from 2019, maybe, something like that. Uh, so they're, you know, they're kind of a little bit older. So the newer version is going to be better, if anything. But as long as it's quantum dot, that's important. That gives you the kind of the, the color and the, the dynamic range and the uh, local dimming stuff. So you don't, your blacks are black. That's really nice to have for a computer monitor. Um, quantum dot, 55 inch means that if you split it into four, you have 27 inch monitors and 4K. And you will find they probably only have one model per year of a 55 inch quantum dot 4K high sense TV. 
and uh, that'll be the one that'll work for you. There'll be a new one maybe coming out now. Maybe there's a new one already, but that's probably the best direction I can give you there. Griminator has a question. Always nice to hear from you, Griminator. Uh, sorry, it's been so long for this one. Uh, if you if there's a discrepancy between the previous day's closing price versus the overnight opening price, is that significant to you? It's the previous day's closing price versus the overnight opening price. Do you mean like the closing price before the, the daily pause and then that opening price? Not really, because at, the, at that time, I'm not trading, first of all, and... Uh, yeah, I just, it's not something I'd look at. So Grimnator has another one. Do I ever look at where the tick is at the open and take a trade based on if it's overbought or oversold? No. I never take a trade just based upon the tick ever, not by the tick by itself. I like to use the tick as kind of a confirmation. Um, you know, it's it, it either a factor for or against the trade, but not based upon the tick by itself, no. All right, I'm going to have to go and clear myself out here, but I'll take a couple quick more questions and then I'll be back with another one of these ASAP and try and do this much more regularly, guys. Jen Bry 97 with regard to your cheat sheet, what sources do you use to find the information? For the cheat sheet, just the price chart. Um, elaborate if you mean something different. Sorry if I'm missing the, the point, but uh, I use the, um, the price chart of the instrument I'm trading. So for the ES, I look at the ES chart. Uh, I like to use the half hour chart to fill in my cheat sheet because it's easy. I can find the, uh, the opening you know, at 9.30, for instance, and I can find all the hourly prices also. MC20S89. What are your thoughts on placing a limit order just above or below the price to try and get a better entry, squeeze a few more ticks out? The only thing I do the odd, odd time, rarely, is if price is sitting really still, I may hit the buy bid button or sell the ask button to try and just get that one extra tick out. But that you, want, you run the risk of missing the trade that way. But sometimes I will do that. But I, I generally don't like uh, limit orders for an entry. I did lots of that when I was swing trading. And I just, you know, when I'm ready to get in, I'm ready to get in. I just want to be in. Jersey Jeepers, is there any reason I don't trade on TradingView charts and use Sierra instead? Yes, uh, TradingView doesn't have tick charts. I wish they did. If they did, I would consider it. But, you know, I love TradingView. And the only thing that I ever want to chart on but I like executing on a physical program um, that I know isn't loading all this HTML stuff. It's just strictly pushing the data through and any, everything else is handled locally on my computer. And um, it has tick charts. And I just, I've always traded on a physical platform. I have tried trading on TradingView just a little bit, like very small, um, actually live through it. And it works just fine. But again, they don't have tick charts, and I like to execute on a tick chart, so it just doesn't work for that, but it is by far the nicest uh, and like most revolutionary charting tool I've seen in my trading career. All right, guys, I think that's about it for today. But thanks so much for watching. As always, guys, keep your questions and comments coming. Uh, I really enjoy this, so it's just, you know, I love making videos like this. So I'm going to try and do more of these. Still keep up the live trading, but definitely do more of these because these are really a lot of fun. Anyway, grab my cheat sheet and newsletter at atradernextdoor.com. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys again soon.